So question six is a permutations, combinations, arrangements question. It starts with uh, seven cards, each with a digit printed on it, forming a seven-digit number. How many different seven-digit numbers can be formed using these cards? Okay. Um, well, I mean, that's, that's the same as we just had with arranging the word statistics and seeing how many arrangements of that we could have. We've got, um, we've got seven cards, so we're going to involve seven factorial in this somewhere, aren't we? But three of the cards all have the same number on it, so it wouldn't matter what order they appeared. So we need to divide by three factorial to recognise the fact that there were three cards that had the same order. Um, and that gives us our number. Are we are we happy that that's mm -hmm. there's also the two fives. Oh, there's also the two fives. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I I didn't notice the two fives. Thanks. So we've got seven factorial over three factorial, two factorial, which gives us um, four hundred and twenty. Oh, good. Did you do it in your head? No, I had it ready oh. earlier. There we go. Four hundred and twenty. That is a four. Isn't it like a four? Yeah. Right. That, that's quite a nice start. Are we happy with that? Now, the question gets a little bit more interesting. The diagram shows five white cards and ten grey cards, each with a letter printed on it. From these cards, three white cards and four grey cards are selected at random without <coughs> regard to order. How many selections are seven cards are possible. Okay, this is the, the order doesn't matter, so this is a C question, not a P question when we're using the NCR or NPR formula. Um, so we're choosing three white cards out of the five white cards that are there. So we're going to have 5C3 involved. And for every one of these selections that we make of three white cards, we're going to choose four grey cards to go along with it. So we need to times this by the number of selections of grey cards, which is, there are ten, and we're choosing four from that. And if we multiply these two things together, five C3 times ten C4, we have 2,100 possible selections. Okay, do you be happy? Just take a moment to... There are 10 grey cards, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, so from the grey cards we're choosing four. Now, uh, find the problem to that the seven cards include exactly one card showing the letter A. This is one of those sneaky things that comes in at the end where we, we can't just dive straight into it because there are, there are a couple of ways that that could happen. Because that could happen if we chose the letter A from the white cards, but not the letter A from the grey cards. Or it could happen if we chose it from the grey cards, but not from the white cards. So we need to think all the way through these, uh, these possible ways of doing it. Right, so. <coughs> so let's think of these two options. If we, if we choose the first option, where the letter A is on a white card. <coughs> so if we're definitely choosing the letter on the white card, that means that there are two other white cards chosen from the remaining four. And when we think about the grey cards, that means we're picking four grey cards, but the letter A is not one of them. So we're choosing four grey cards from the nine that are left if we're ignoring the letter A. Does that make sense? So the number of ways that we could have chosen the letter A on the white card is 4C2. Oh, Type in times nine 
C4, which gives us 756 possible ways of doing it. Or, the letter A could have been on a grey card. And so thinking of how many ways that could happen, well that means that um, we definitely didn't choose the white card letter A. So from the four white cards, we chose three of them. And from, well, from the, the grey cards, we definitely did choose the letter A. So that's one of the four cards. So the remaining three came from the remaining nine cards. So it's 9C3. Does that make sense? There's some, some doubt about whether that makes sense. Okay, so let's just think that through. From the, we've definitely chosen that letter A this time. Which means because we're only having one letter A, we definitely didn't choose that one. So from the white cards, we had to choose three out of those four. Okay, there's, there's four ways that we could do that. That's four C3. From the grey cards, we've definitely chosen that one. So from the remaining nine, we need to make up the, the four with another three. So that's nine C3 is our other option. Which gives us... Three hundred and thirty-six ways that we could do that. And the question said, what did it say? Find the probability that the seven cards include exactly one card showing the letter A. So that is well the total number of ways that we can do it is seven five six plus three three six. And the total number of possible selections we found earlier on as being 420. Did we? Hang on. So that's so we've got way more. Hang on, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, I'm looking at the wrong answer. Good. Oh, that's a relief. 2,100. Yeah, I was looking at the answer to the wrong part. That was quite scary, wasn't it? Because, of course, we can't have that number over 420 as a probability. That would be utter nonsense. Right, so I'm getting an answer of 13 over 25. That's my probability for that. Okay. And, and as I say, I've, having done that question a few times in the past, that's a slightly different approach, I think, to the other times I did it. I wrote out much more the first time I did it. So that just felt like the right way to go there. Right, <coughs> that's maths.